Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to another Fosh 155 game but this time it's one of my own and it's also a very recent replay from Monday and uh, the reason why I was playing this on Monday is that it was one of those relatively rare occasions uh, at least uh, recently uh, when Sir on stream Willow tanks that he decided to Platoon, and if you're unaware, you know, if you're wondering why you haven't seen me around on Sircon stream so much when he's playing tanks, it's because he doesn't platoon much these days. And uh, honestly, it's kind of understandable because platooning basically gets you a heavier matchmaking weight. It's one of the ways that Wargaming balances out the matchmaking. It tries to have platoons versus platoons, and also because Wargaming recognizes that, you know, a, a platoon can have a bigger impact on a game than just uh, somebody playing on their own, therefore they have a, a heavier matchmaking weight. They're more likely to be down-tiered. So this is one of those things that has just, you know, annoyed Sircon to the point where um, normally these days when he's playing tanks he plays solo because he doesn't want to have that extra thing of, you know, uh, there's all the stuff that annoys him besides, and then he's going to get constantly down-tiered because he's in a platoon. But in this case, he was playing with his newest toy, the T-100LT, the Soviet Tier 10 light tank. And as it's Tier 10, he obviously decided, you know, why not do a platoon anyway? Because it's not like we can get down-tiered. But we were getting a lot of just basically all Tier 10 matches. The vast majority for, of the uh, the games we played for the streams were solid tier 10 matchmaking which you know on the face of it sounds okay but um, it got to be a bit lacking in variety after a while because you, you tend to see the same tanks over and over again although in this case as you can see the enemy team's actually got four of the TVP uh, T50 uh, slash 51s uh, which we didn't see like, that much of I mean there was a reasonably common sight but to see four of them on one team was uh, a little unusual. So I've, as for myself in the Fosh 155, as I mentioned in the previous video, with it being replaced, I basically sold a bunch of uh, consumables to uh, be able to afford it, which hasn't left me with a lot of credits. So um, I don't really have any equipment on this beyond the the binos, the camo net, and the uh, the uh, toolbox, basically all the equipment that you can swap between the tanks, because I can't afford to put on things like vents or optics or whatever. So it's a bit ghetto at the moment, and the crew is 100% crew, but they don't even have sixth sense. I didn't really have a good crew available to swap into this thing. So um, you know, it's it's at least got the best possible reload and all that kind of thing um, for you know having 100% crew but it's it's not a great crew in terms of it would also be nice to have things like brothers in arms and the camo skills but uh, just in the time I was playing because I was largely playing this um, I managed to put on about 50% onto their first crew skills something like that using a booster so yeah it was quite a productive day in terms of just even grinding some crew skills but the main reason I was playing it is because uh, I hadn't really played it up till that point I think I'd played one match prior to this stream and then I just thought well this is my newest tier 10 we're going to be playing a lot of tier 10s why not give it a go and um, yeah it doesn't take long to realize that uh, all of the things that people say about it are largely true. Uh, it's got French gun handling, which if you've played up through the French tank destroyers, you're going to be kind of used to anyway. I think the tier 9 Foch is the only one that kind of has decent gun handling with its nominal top gun, because the tier 9 Foch really only has that 120mm. Uh, but um, there are other lower tier French tank destroyers, I think really tiers 6, 7 and 8, where you don't even want to use the top gun because the top gun, yeah, has the best penetration and the best damage, but usually the gun handling makes it not worth it. So, generally speaking, you know, yeah, you can use the top gun, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best idea to use the top gun, but you don't get that option with the 155. And so, you've got the typically French gun handling, you've got the very narrow gun traverse which is going to be improved I think and um, it just it, it feels like a, a lot of uh, dice rolls and this is going to be quite a lucky match like these shots here against this bat chap 
The first one, okay, I had a bit more of the, the turret there to, to fire at, but that second shot, that, that was pretty lucky. And for a good game in the Fosh 155, it needs to be a lot of these lucky shots adding up because the gun handling is just not good. And the shot to shot reload is not good. So uh, when uh, Snooze was joking about, oh yeah, you get 750 DPM, it can feel like that sometimes. It genuinely can. Because unless you get the time to sit there and just completely fully aim, quite often your shots will not go where you want them to. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's a difficult tank to play in a lot of ways, because you don't want to snapshot, but sometimes you have to snapshot. But then, if you do snapshot, there's a good chance that your uh, shell is just going to be wasted, and you've only got a clip of three, so you don't really want to waste them. You don't want to be then hit with that almost 50 second reload time. So that one, again, not quite fully aimed, but the uh, Type 5 is a reasonably big target, and I didn't take too much damage in return. Uh, that was a Type 5 using the derp gun there, as you can clearly see. Uh, so, like, just so far this has not been too bad, 2500 damage uh, done, I, I had a couple of games. Um, I, I think I was hitting, like, unless it was a really terrible game, I was hitting around 2k damage fairly consistently, but getting more than that is quite difficult. And having a match where I, you know, was able to load more than three clips of ammo was actually pretty rare. So the team was pretty awkward in this one. We basically had, uh, it, like, I, I faffed around in the beginning. I, I, it was tactical faffing, though, tactical faffing. I was waiting to see where the team was going. And we ended up with this really awkward fight in the town. Snooze died pretty early on. And we've come down to this, basically. Four versus four. Now, at this point, Sir Connor said, I'm going to go for the WZ. I was just about loaded, which is what he was waiting for. Unfortunately, he took a hit before we could kill the WZ. But that is now one less enemy tank to deal with. The alpha damage on this, of course, is good, um, and this is, in a way, it's the fight you want and don't want because um, this gun is at its most reliable when you are very much closer to the enemy, just because of that not good gun handling. But at the same time, if you're close to the enemy, it doesn't afford you that much opportunity to safely go and reload. So this just ended up being a very awkward fight, and you could see so far how much downtime I've had just waiting for the reload. And sometimes you're just hanging on to that last shot because you think you might use it. Now that shot there, I, I don't know. I think I was feeling the pressure a bit. I mean, also, I am a bit rusty at tanks. There's no two ways about it. Uh, I don't play a lot of World of Tanks these days. It's maybe once a week. If that, in fact, some weeks I probably don't touch it at all. So, um, you know, there was the whole new tank thing going on, but also just the fact that I don't play a lot of tanks these days. But I do still enjoy playing it with Zircon on those rare occasions when he does decide to platoon on the stream. He doesn't really play tanks off stream. Um, I could probably, thinking about it, you know, I could probably, probably hit Fosh up for platoons a lot more often than I do as well. It's just I don't often get the urge to play tanks. It was one of those times I saw when Circle was platooning and I thought, you know, why not? So there's only a couple of them left. Uh, that's another very lucky shot. That was not fully aimed. I would have had another opportunity five seconds later or whatever it is with the interclip time. Um, to uh, take another shot at the TVP, and of course, even if I hadn't killed him uh, with him turning his gun to me, Sircon would have had the shot. Uh, so, okay, that would have been all well and good, but uh, there's a good chance that I would have uh, been on even fewer hit points, because the armor on this thing doesn't often work. I had one game where I had about 2,000 damage bounced from quite long range, and hello, Grilla. Uh, but otherwise, um, the penetrations are so high at, at tier 10, like because we were getting tier 10 games, solid, flat tier 10 matchmaking over and over again, that even if people aren't reaching for the premium ammo, there's still a pretty good chance that they will be able to pen you. And the weak spots on the Fosh 155 are pretty well known at this point. It's not a difficult one to, to know where to shoot. So it's just us versus this E3. Neither of us can take the hit. But this is where the clip comes in useful. He's not exactly a one-shot, but with the 750 average damage, um, yeah, I really need to get in at least one hit, and then even if I die, 
because it's an E3, because it doesn't have a turret, Sircon's got a very good chance of finishing him off. But I need to get in that solid hit. Initially I was going to go for another clip of AP, but then I thought, well, actually no, under the circumstances, I think a clip of heat would be more than justified. So, uh, again, not a fully aimed shot. Again, it felt quite lucky that that actually went in. And uh, that's allowed Sircon to get in his hit. And then I thought I'll maybe just try my luck on the, the top armor, on the little MG cupola, and it actually worked. But even if that hadn't, you know, Sircon would have taken the kill. So there we go. Because we were there together as a platoon at the end, we were able to bring home that win. And as a really nice bonus, that was my ace tanker. And it really didn't take that long to get it. And also it didn't take that much XP to get it. Only just under 1100 base XP. With five kills and nearly 4.9k damage. So that was i don't know that felt like it was on the low side for a tier 10 but then on the other hand it's the fosh 155 so maybe it's not surprising another thing i noticed there we go 2500 credits profit i wasn't making much money with this thing in fact i think i actually lost uh maybe i don't know 20 30k credits maybe a bit more than that over the course of the uh over the course of the stream uh, it's not really a tank that you make profit with it's got pretty expensive shells and because the gun is so unreliable you're not exactly uh, getting the benefit of those shells quite often in contrast you know a decent game in something like the mouse i can easily make you know 20 30 40k profit if it's a really good game but it's just hard to lose money when I'm playing the mouse, whereas with the Fosh 155, even in games where I was doing, you know, two and a half thousand damage, which is not super good for a tier 10 tank destroyer, but it felt okay for a Fosh. Um, yeah, I was still losing credits, even with a premium account, so... I can see, I can see why this is not a popular machine, and I can see why Wargaming has kind of decided to replace it, but of course that question remains, is the replacement going to be... Uh, any better? Is it going to suffer from the problems of the old Fosh 155? Uh, uh, who knows? Time will tell, but um, Wargaming just seems so wedded to the idea that the French tier 10s must all be autoloaders, including the artillery, that um, I'm just honestly disappointed that we haven't had even the option of a non-autoloading gun on a tier 10 French tank destroyer. But uh, anyway, c'est la vie. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video in the meantime, and if you have, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.